Today we're going to take a look and a listen to the Joyo Jackman 2. What's up everybody, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Taylor and I do all sorts of guitar related stuff like this on my channel. If that's something you enjoy, make sure to subscribe and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss any of my uploads. Today we're going to be taking a look at this guy, the Joyo Jackman 2. Now it is small, it is light, it is portable, it has an effects loop and a Bluetooth feature. It is powerful enough to power a 4x12 cabinet and to keep up with a drummer, no problem. But does it sound any good? Well, in today's video, we're gonna test it out in a number of different ways. We're gonna go through the settings on the amplifier. We're gonna try to boost this amplifier with a number of different boosts. And then at the end of the video, we'll listen to it in a mix, both with and without a boost in front of it. Now, if you haven't seen any of my previous videos on the Joyo Band amps, and you are unfamiliar with these amps, these are small 20 watt class D amplifiers that have a single 12 AX7 preamp tube inside the amp to sort of give you a hybrid sound. So you're getting the tube sound from the preamp section and that 20 watt class D power amp section is more than enough to power your 4x12 cabinet like I mentioned in the beginning of the video. So all of that makes for this cool tiny little compact amp that you can hold in one hand. And if you look closely at the name, Joyo has given you a hint as to which amp this is emulating. You guys see it there in the name? Huh? Huh? JCM? That's correct, the Joyo Jackman 2 is emulating the sound of a Marshall JCM series amplifier. It has two channels, an overdrive and a clean channel. We'll test both of those out. It has separate gain, tone, and levels for each of the channels. And even though all of your EQ settings are handled by this one tone knob, you still get a lot of variability out of this amplifier with the one tone knob. This little guy also has an effects loop, a headphone output, which has speaker simulation included, and it's Bluetooth enabled if you wanna to connect to it via your phone or your Bluetooth enabled device and play some tunes through it. It's pretty sweet. So in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna check out both of the channels. We'll mess around with the settings a little bit. We'll try it with a few different boosts in front of the amp. And then at the end of the video, we will shoot it out in a mix both with and without a boost. But before we get started, if you like my videos and you wanna help me keep making them, there is a support section in the description below. There's all sorts of stuff down there like links to my band's merchandise, affiliate links to Amazon. And if you could go down there and check it out, it would really mean a lot to me. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's get this guy hooked up. What's up guys, I am plugged into the Jackman 2 Joyo Bantamp over here. The settings are set at noon, I'm on the Overdrive channel. I am playing my Jackson Soloist as an EMG 81 in the bridge and an 85 in the neck. Here's how it sounds. <laughs> Sounds really fucking killer. And if I had a JCM 800 plugged into my Marshall 4x12 cabinet, it's kind of exactly what I would expect it to sound like. All right, so demo's over. Just kidding. What I wanna do specifically with this guy is I wanna see how well it takes a boost. I wanna see what kind of modern metal tone I can get out of it. And I also wanna go over the clean channel because the clean channel is not your average clean channel. <laughs> And 
And just for reference, I am recording the signal out of my 4x12 cabinet. It's mic'd up with an SM57, and I'm also recording the signal directly out of the Joyo Bantamp as a backup, and just so that we can A, B the two and kind of see the differences. <laughs> You know, when you plug in something and it sounds that good right away, you know, it's going to be a really special video. You know what I mean? Let's change the settings here a little bit. Okay, sounds really awesome and there is a little bit of tonal variety in here I mean it is only one knob so you do kind of have to give it a little bit of a break there but I think it's really nailing that Marshall JCM tone let's mess with the gain here a little bit let's turn it down <laughs> Sounds really good with the gain rolled back. There's a little bit of that edge breakup thing going on. Even though we're a little bit past that point of edge breakup, you can tell that when I really lay on the dynamics, it does break up the same way that a normal tube amp would. Let's just crank this guy and see what happens. <laughs> Okay, there's enough gain there to do some damage. Although I think if you're really going for a high gain modern metal sound, you're definitely gonna have to hit the front of this with a boost, which we will do here in just a second. Let's switch over to the clean channel. Let's see what that sounds like. There's the settings at noon. I really like the clean channel on this amp. I really like how much character it has and the fact that, you know, you can get a lot of versatility just based off how hard you're playing. Let's dial back the gain and see if we can get that sweet spot in the edge breakup. <laughs> Not quite enough gain there. Okay. 
Okay, and then let's try it at full gain here. Okay, you still have a little bit of that going on, but you definitely don't have the same sort of dynamic range that you would have with a full-size tube head. Obviously, there's a big price difference between the two. You know, this one's like $180-ish online, and I, for the life of me, cannot find a JCM 800 for less than $1,600 used, so I guess you have to pick and choose what's important to you. Okay, let's mess with the tone knob a little bit. Dial that back. Sounds pretty good. And again, I think it's doing a really great job of emulating that Marshall JCM sound. But how well does it take a boost? And will that boost get us into modern metal territory? Let's find out. I have to hook it up. Okay, we have a fork and grind plugged into the front of the Jackman 2. Let's turn it on. All right, let's go to the overdrive channel too. And let's preemptively turn that tone back a little bit. Probably the gain down, just a smidge. <laughs> Let's hear it with the pedal off. Okay, so I don't know how much that's coming through, but you can hear there's like something weird happening in the low end there. Hmm. Let's try a different pedal. Okay, this is a Transmutation Devices 33 volt preamp. Let's engage this and see what this does to it. Yeah, there's definitely something weird happening there. Since both the Fortin grind and the 33 volt preamp hit the front of the amp with a lot of extra signal, maybe let's tone it down a little bit and let's try something a little bit more common, a tube screamer. We'll come back to this though in a minute. Doing this purely for science. Okay, so now we're hitting the front of it with a tube screamer. Let's check that out. <laughs> Okay, that's much better and I don't have that weird thing going on. So I think what's going on there is just hitting the front of this amp with something like a Fortin Grind or like a Fortin 33 or the TMD 33 volt preamp is just a little bit much for it. And it's just causing some weird undesirable behavior out of the amp. But uh, using a tube screamer sounds great. Same thing without the Tube Screamer engaged.
Yeah, if you want to get this into high gain territory, you definitely need to be using a boost with it. Preferably the Tube Screamer because uh, the Fortin Grind and the 33 volt preamp didn't really work out in front of the amp. But let's try out that 33 volt preamp in the effects loop section of this guy. Okay, so now I have the 33 volt preamp plugged into the effects loop of the Joyo Bant amp. And yes, they have effects loops, just another perk of these amps. Here's the amp by itself. <laughs> Let's engage the pedal. Okay, so you can definitely run these types of pedals through the effects loop, but now we have figured out conclusively that the pedal running into the front of the amp is what is causing that weird sort of noise. I want to put it back in front of the amp and mess with the level on the 33 volt preamp pedal and see if we can get it to work that way. Okay, we're back to running the 33 volt preamp in front of the amp. Let's dial the level back a little bit and see what happens. <laughs> Okay, that definitely seemed to take care of the problem here. Let's see how much of it I can get away with. I'm gonna turn the level up to noon and see if we get that issue again. Okay, that seemed to solve the problem, and that's another reason that I really like this 33 volt preamp pedal. It's because it's really similar to a Fortin grind, except you can control the level and the bass and the treble all independently. It just makes this pedal a little bit more versatile, in my opinion, and it really allows you to dial it in, especially in a scenario like this, where running it, you know, up too loud is just causing some weird sort of sounds out of the amplifier that we're trying to boost with it. Yeah. Okay, I'm not gonna go over the Bluetooth feature because I did that in the last two videos and it worked exactly the same for both the Vivo and the Zombie 2. And if you missed that, I will link that up here. All right, you guys have heard me play through this thing. You've heard what it sounds like with various types of boosts, but what does it sound like in a mix? Let's check that out, meow. So I want to know, what do you guys think of the Joyo Jackman 2 band amp? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, thank you so much to my patrons. Your contribution is greatly appreciated. And as always, if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.